Hi, I'm Paul Hopewell, and I'm glad you can join me for another episode of The Shed Dweller. I make all sorts of parts and components in my workshop while showing you the process and the techniques I use along the way. I'd also like to say hi to all of my subscribers and say thank you for your continued support and to suggest to those who've just found my channel to subscribe and click on the bell. Today I'm making two ER32 collet holders. One is hexagonal and the other one square. The material is six inches long and both are cold drawn. When I mount these blocks in the jaws, I'm not going to set them true to the faces or the flat faces. I'm going to set them as best as possible to the corners using a DTI that's sporting a 20mm bottom. I know it's not the done thing, but I'm not too worried about that because either way I'll have to skim each flat face to get them fairly true later anyway. I've started the process off by cleaning up the end face and uh, then popping a centre hole in to provide the usual support and guidance for later operations. I'm using the rule to get my spigot shoulder length set to approximately 30mm. It's my intention also to put two gauging or setting paths on each block, one at each end. This is to enable me to do some fine tuning later as I get to the grinding process. Meanwhile knocking the corners off is making chips that are small and fast enough and they're coming off like little hot bullets. Still, although I've only set the blocks up using uh, DTI over the top corners um, and as I progress down the spigot diameter to the point that the intermittent cut is almost over, I stopped the machine just to take a look at the lands and they were, to my surprise, pretty even width. I took the threaded section and spig it down to 40 millimeters, despite knowing that I'd have to hold this material by this spigot later to do the other end. I suppose I could have done the other end first and this one after. I hadn't got my thinking cap on during the decision making process then. Even during the threaded end as the second operation, it would have still had to have been taken out of the chuck while I set up the compound slide for the 8 degree setting. And I can't have the compound slide set to 8 degrees because the compound slide and the tailstock occupy the same space at certain times. As you can see the next operation is to drill right through but because the material is 6 inches long I haven't got anything at 20 millimeters that will go right through so I'm going to have to drill through from both ends and hope they meet up in the centre. Now it's time for the second end. After facing off and uh, piloting uh, the end face I went back to making them little hot bullets uh, while uh, making the second but smaller spigot. I'm just using a 45 degree tool to knock the corner off this spigot. Finishing the through hole using the drill went well. Um, that is to say it went through without any problems as it broke through. Here I'm using a deburring tool in the bore. I'm just polishing the spigot up with some emery paper to make it a bit easier for the DTI to read. Here I'm using my cheap Chinese collet holder for the mill. That's to assist me with setting up the compound slide of 8 degrees. I used a 10mm boring bar to reach right into the bore, 
but because it's such a small boring bar the cuts had to be very light to reduce the amount of vibration that was produced. The insert is a very positive rake insert in order to make the cut as clean as I could possibly get. Even so, I still had to do a little bit of polishing with emery paper after I'd achieved the correct collet depth. Before I started and after I'd finished the collet tapered bore, I confirmed concentricity using the polished spigot behind the thread using a DTI. After the final check to confirm that the collet fits, it's time to calculate uh, the thread cutting dimensions. I went on the internet for the thread dimensions for an ER32UM collet holder. And the thread is 40 by 1.5mm pitch. I've done this before on a collet holder for my Clarkson tool cutter grinder, but I didn't show how I'd calculated it. I hope this helps. Hit pause if you want more time to view it. At the end of the 20mm long thread I put a thread relief to prevent breaking the thread insert and to separate the thread from the setting shoulder or the spigot. After the first few tentative cuts using my thread cutter I started to get a bit brave and I ramped up the cutting speed. The finish is wonderful, but I soon found that I may have been pushing my look a bit too far. I found myself wanting to use the tailstock with a live centering to steady the end of the workpiece, just to prevent the chuck letting it go. But there wasn't anything to hold on to. So it was time to get my bodge thinking cap on to find a way round this. I sorted this problem by shoving a long bolt down the chuck tube and put a thick washer on the other end and locked it all up with a large nut. After machining the end of the bolt to make a face, I used the centre drill to spot it and then the live center worked to treat. This prevented me taking the material out of the chalk and I kept all of my settings for the remainder of the thread without any problems. The high speed I used for cutting the thread made for a very good finish. Despite this the collet nut only went on by a few threads. That was before I realised I hadn't cleaned the dirt out of the threads themselves. A quick blast with the air gun solved the problem and the knot went on with very little friction um, and that in itself would wear off in time. Well that's the first one done and now it's to do the uh, square one.
I'm uncovering my homemade surface plate. Before putting any of these parts on the surface plate I just stone them all down to get rid of anything that could scratch the surface plate. Nothing really there. Now I can check to see how far out the faces are in relation to the two spigots and really they're not that bad. At the, at the most I had tooth out. Using the diamond I dressed the wheel to a coarse finish. Dressing the wheel coarse helped prevent vibration marks that, uh, that show up in the material. It didn't eradicate it all, but it just reduced it. The reason is because the, both of the bits of material have a very slight or a very small taper to them. The taper correction is going to be provided by cigarette paper and this has the ability to cause a little less stability. I know that if I'd have dressed the wheel to a fine finish the surface of both of these blocks would look a bit like the pattern of a Mandelbrot set. After all faces were surface ground Using the DTI confirmed that the spigot at both ends was indeed central. There we are, job done. Thanks for watching. Bye.